Good morning. Good morning. And a very warm welcome to our service this morning at Halberton United Church. Um, I know we do have some visitors with us this morning, so we're so glad you're here, at least one. And also a very warm welcome to everyone who's joining us, whatever day or time of the week you're joining us online. Your presence with us is a blessing to us. Please join me as we say together our opening prayer, which you will find printed on the screen. Let us pray. Holy Father, you reign over the heavens and the earth. We gather today to worship you and to listen to your word and teaching. Grant us, we pray, to discern the difference between what is temporary and what is eternal. In wisdom, you have established nations and kingdoms and entrusted us to use government for the common interests. May your will and way inform the decisions of those who rule, that we may live in peace and follow your way of love through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Um, um, Janice, where's Janice? Do you want to do something with uh, her? Up? Let's go back over here, Craig, to okay. the lectern. Maybe Janice, come on up. And I'll put... Maybe uh, we didn't really plan anything. Come on here where you can be seen. Janice is our representative for Operation <laughs> Christmas Child. Um, and we're not the only ones doing it. So they have to be in this week, right? Yes, so this is pickup week. Pickup week. So you can actually see some. We've got them sitting on a stand here. Yeah, <laughs> this is so the pile. We've got a few here, and then maybe more come in this week. Um, and this is also our uh, mission of the month, which is uh, Operation uh, Samaritan's Purse, which one of their subcategories is. Yeah. Um, is Operation Christmas Child. Lock, Lachlan today said they have they have put together and are bringing in eight boxes from Little Lachlan, so that's good. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. So, so let's just uh, send them off with a prayer, shall we? Lord, uh, we thank you for your great heart for all the peoples of our world, especially for children, many of whom are who are who are struggling in in various parts of our world and hungry. Lord, may the boxes that are sent forth from here and all over. Bring them cheer, bring them hope, bring them joy. Lord, uh, be with those um, who have put these boxes together. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to bless. In your name we pray, Jesus our Lord. Amen. Is that it? Good. Okay, good. There are, if anybody is wanting some boxes, there's one box still out in the foyer. And if you uh, need some, just tell me and I can get more. Thanks, Janice. Morning, everybody. Where's he? What's that? 18, 18 folks? I lost my constructions. Oh, here. Nope, I got it. fell on the floor. Hi, everybody. Welcome, everybody who's, uh, who's out there in the Internet. 19 concurrent uh, devices are viewing. Um, we, we notice that when you come to church, there's less people viewing in the devices. Funny how that works. Um, and we have some comments here that we should probably bring forward. Uh, who we got out there? Joy Cooper and, and Bonnie and Peterborough, Peggy, Halliburton. No, that's Barb, Barb Peel. That's not funny. Barb's re recovering from COVID. So she's not. A, she stayed away last week just in case. So appreciate that, Barb. And uh, Cheryl Russell, Lisa Harrison. Uh, Lisa's wishing Barb to be better, be better soon. Um, Paul says, special birthday wishes for John Ritchie and prayers for Jan and the death of such a beloved pet dog. That's Jan Tedford. Lost her little doggy. Me. Me. Oh, yeah. We know this little doggy. That's hard. Um, and... Uh, Liz, Liz Matthews, so Gary had his had surgery, Gary Matthews had surgery on Monday, uh, which is like, they took out a benign tumor from his front of his head. 
So he's he's all stitched up, and but he's got he's home. He got home on Friday, and he's been mostly sleeping. So we'll keep him in our prayers. Okay. So we we, uh, we we didn't have Craig last week, so we thought we'd do our Remembrance Day ceremony today. And we're, we're it's simply going to be we're going to sing sing O Canada at one end, God Save the King at the other, and Craig's going to play the trumpet and do the the trumpet sounds and a moment of silence in the middle of that. So I think if we're ready. We're ready. We'll do O Canada first. Put, puts the flag up. Okay.
Thanks, Craig. I was just told we're sort of doing an exception of the rule. Apparently, you're supposed to take the puppies off after uh, Remembrance Day and 11 o'clock time. Um, okay, what are we doing? Let's, we're going to sing Lion of Judah. It'll clear it. Let's continue to worship the Lord as we present our offerings. And uh, we need to get Gary back on his feet today. I thought we'd get Gary, Gary and Liz. Today. Gary, good of you to come out as you recover. Over to you, Liz. See you today. <clears throat> We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, I trust, O Lord, from thee. Prayer time. We've got Gary's on the list, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yes? Um, I'd like to put out a prayer. Herb Hill? That's Herb. Okay. Uh, Max, Denise, and Johnny Kirk. Um, he had a fatal heart attack on Wednesday. Oh. Wow. Okay. Family of Herb Hill. 
who died suddenly from a heart attack. Yes, yeah, Chan Tidford. Yep. Jan Tedford, who lost her little dog just the last couple of days, a couple of days ago? Yesterday, okay. Not, not good. Um, now, so, did, I don't know if John's watching online. Is he? Oh, he's probably exhausted from yesterday. They had a three, three hour to do there. Yeah. Do we sing? Sure. Okay. Uh, to John, John Ritchie. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, dear John, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, John. He was well fatted, I thought. He turned 80, in case you were wondering. Yep. Henry. Uh, sure. As far as I know, all, all is well with Henry. <laughs> he, yeah. Yeah, so, he, yeah, he's, he's been home from the hospital for over a week now and uh, seems to be doing quite normal, being quite normal. He's still got weeks to recover because he had open heart surgery, plus he's on a no-fat diet. <laughs> it's always fun for the mother of a three-year-old. Oh, he... <laughs> She made a soup this week, or past week, with, uh, with some, some ginger. She put a little too much ginger in it. And uh, Henry says, he, he tasted it and said, Mom, can I have some Tylenol for this? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's used to getting Tylenol out for the yeah, discomfort. <laughs> See, but hashtag mom fail. <laughs> it's cute. Okay, um, let's pray. Ah, Lord, we thank you that you care for all of us and for our world and for the circumstances in which we find ourselves. And you've promised that uh, we can cast our cares upon you for you care for us. You promised that if we ask, we shall receive. If we seek, we shall find. If we knock, the door will be open to us. So in your name, Jesus, we come to you, to your throne, Father, to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, with our prayers and needs. Um, Lord, we continue to remember as we remember wars of the past and the, the sacrifice folks have made, we think of the wars of the present, especially the one in Ukraine. And we ask that you bring an end to that in the defense of the lives of all involved. Lord, you protect lives and, and heal this land and restore them and bring peace. Lord, hear our prayer and in your love answer. And as we continue to deal with COVID, we, we ask for your help and intervention or that we may uh, have a complete end to that and a return to normalcy. Oh, Lord, we, we lift that to you. We thank you. We seem to be getting there slowly, but uh, thank you for vaccines. Watch over those who are, who are, uh, who are sick, those who, who uh, think of folks like Barb Peel this week and others who have contracted this disease that they might be uh, healed quickly, and, and others who are vulnerable, others who are uh, in health care, or we think especially also of uh, our little children and of um, our, our hospitals getting swamped with, uh, with needs and uh, overwhelming them. Lord, we pray for, for recourse for that to, uh, that to be taken care of, Lord, and to people be able to get the help they need. Lord, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. We remember the family of Marie Beatty, Aaron Nicholson, Lois Rigney, Gary Matthews, Max Ward Sr., Myrtle and Bass Boothorn, Caroline Argarides, Margaret Mark, Warren and Jean Curry, Eleanor, Henry Morgan, Bev Muir, and Olive Cooper. Lord, hear our prayer in your love. Answer. We remember Craig Nickel, Richard Tilson, Vicki, Jane Johnson, Brian Newstead. Ted Schultz, Alex Buxy, Jessica, Deborah Waterhouse, Corey, Don, Isabel Jolly, and Bernice Ross. Lord, hear our prayer in your love. We think of the family of Herb Hill, of Jan Tedford, and the loss of her little, her little dog. We think of Walt Griffin Jr., Murray Misko, Victoria Ancaster, 
Paul, Gary Swaggerman, Kelsey Barnum, John Payne, Judy Davis, Ron Mark Jr. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Carol Parnell, and Ali and Courtney, Maureen Duquette, Chris Rusk, Don and Karen Tran, Darko Knezovich, Steve Wigan, and others that we bring to you in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, hear our prayer in your love, answer. For we pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Okay. I guess uh, you're up for scripture reading. <clears throat> that would be when. Please join me as we say together the prayer of illumination. Let us pray. Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, and it's a section of Luke where Jesus is, preach, is in the temple courts and he is teaching the people and preaching the Gospel. And the chief priests, the scribes, and the teachers of the law are questioning by what authority he is doing this. Please listen for the word of God as it comes to us through the Gospel of Luke. Keeping a close watch on him, they sent spies who pretended to be sincere. They hoped to catch Jesus in something he said so that they might hand him over to the power and authority of the governor. So the spies questioned him. Teacher, we know that you speak and teach what is right, and that you do not show partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? He saw through their duplicity and said to them, Show me a denarius, whose image and inscription are on it. Caesar's, they replied. He said to them, Then give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. They were unable to trap him in what he had said there in public, and astonished by his answer, they became silent. May God bless this reading to our understanding and to our living. Thanks, Gwen. Um, so a couple things I just remembered to speak, to mention. Uh, Official board is this week. I get, we didn't have a slide for that, I don't think so. Did we? No. So Tuesday, it's this Tuesday. Anybody that's on the board, so it's uh, by Zoom. Probably got got uh, notice of that or coming into the church. So it's a what we, we're now calling a hybrid meeting, where you can come in person or you can come via Zoom, either by internet or by telephone. So that's happening Tuesday at two. The other thing is, it's the season for Santa Claus parades. So if anybody wants to, we, we, we are part of that. We're involved. John Menzies uh, does a lot of the uh, organizing of that. And we have a few singers and instrumentalists on a float. And we'll be in Minden next Saturday, the 19th, uh, at the Minden Parade. It starts at 11. So that's, if you, can, if you can get to that, we'll see you there. And then the next Friday, which is the 25th, there's the Santa Claus Parade here in Halliburton, which we'll, be, we'll also be at. So if you get a chance to go to one of those, uh, hope you come out and uh, support us. So that's, uh, it, it, this is the first time they've done it on different weekends. It's usually a Friday night and then the next day, Saturday at <clears throat> Saturday 11. So we're a little peeved that it isn't, but anyway, <laughs> we'll have to speak to the powers that be, the civic authorities, which is... They probably weren't talking to each other. They weren't. Maybe they weren't talking to each other. Well, I don't know. Yeah. We'll have to see. Usually it's, I think Halliburton's got it right, but you know, let's not go there. I'll get in trouble with my Minden people. Um, okay, let's sing from ocean unto ocean, our land. A little background of this story first. Um, does, is it named Robert Murray, the writer of this? Yeah. So Robert Murray wrote this uh, back in 1890. Uh, 
And uh, it, Robert Murray was a, was a, before the United Church, was, he's a Canadian, so this is a Canadian hymn, and he, he was a, a Presbyterian minister in Nova Scotia, uh, as well as a journalist. For many years, he was a journalist, very involved, very interested in politics, uh, which is interesting. And then about the time that they, they built the railway from east to west, he, he took that railway, and I think we think that may have inspired him to, to write, from ocean unto ocean, our land shall serve the Lord. And if you'll recall, your Latin motto for Canada, it is from sea to sea, or ad mare usque ad mare. Yep. So that's, uh, that, this kind of echoes that whole sentiment. He was a great proponent of confederation back in the day. Let's sing from ocean unto ocean. <laughs> Water again. Yeah, thanks. It won't write it. You'll, you'll miss my shtick. That's all right. <laughs> okay, let's pray. Ah, oh, Lord, we uh, help us to come to you humbly with our hearts open and our ears ready to listen to what you have to say. Lord, speak to us through your scripture, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Um, Lord, teach us in your ways, in your truth, in your light, in your love. But we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Sermon's called Heads or Tails. Call it. Craig wins and the rest of you lose. <laughs> Which, which is exa exactly my confusion since I was a child. <laughs> um, heads or tails, right? Always kind of puzzled me because, you know, I got the heads. The, you know, the queen was on one side. But then on the other side was like a beaver or it was like a sailboat or something. And I was like, or, or the witch? The blue nose, exactly. That's a sailboat. And or it was, uh, there was the head of a, an elk, I think, or on one side, you know, so... So which head are we talking about? If it's the head of the elk or the head of the queen? You know, it's kind of confusing. So somebody explained to me at some point that, well, you know, 
Head, heads and tails are the opposites of each other, so that's why they, we call it that. <laughs> but, but actually, the, the, Craig, you can have this back after. <laughs> it won't get anywhere if it's in this plane. Uh, coin flipping goes back a long, long time. So coins have been around since about at least six or 700 BC. Um, and, uh, and, you know, we, we've got samples of the archaeologists have, have dug up samples from the Middle East and China and India and all these places. Uh, and it definitely goes back to the time of Julius Caesar. In fact, the rumor is that Julius Caesar, it was a, it was a kind of a kid's game back. They called it heads and ships in, in Latin, of course, back in, in Caesar's day. And uh, the, but the rumor is that sometimes Julius Caesar would decide legal matters with a flip of the coin. <laughs> okay. I think, sometimes I think they still do that today, but no. So uh, a little context to the passage. Gwen kind of kicked it off there, but I'm going to go a little bit deeper with that. So this is Luke chapter 20. And if you were here last week, we, did, we, we, we were on that. Uh, so we, we're, we're leading up, oddly enough, this is the chapter that's leading up to the passion of Christ. It leads up to the, the, uh, the arrest, the trial, and the crucifixion of Christ, uh, it, which follow, starts following like in the next couple of chapters, which is kind of funny because we're, we're actually coming up to Advent where we'll kind of go back to the beginning and the birth of Christ and, uh, you know, and the second coming of Christ. We'll be talking about that. Um, uh, you, you'd think this part might be just before Easter, but, but no. So, so there's this period of time when Jesus came to Jerusalem just before his passion, and uh, the triumphant entry is in the, pr the, the previous chapter in Luke, Luke 19. And then it, it, it appears that he stayed in Jerusalem, like, or he was in Jerusalem for about a week, uh, going back and forth outside the city to the, the Mount of Olives. And he would stay there overnight. He had friends there where he would say, he would come back into the city each day. And he would teach in the temple, in the temple grounds. And uh, it, it appears that it was a time where there was a lot of... Uh, he, he, he was in a lot of arguments. There was a lot of <laughs> strife between him and the, and the leaders at this point. And, and Luke 20 seeks to show us that. So actually, just before, uh, the other thing he did after he came into the city, uh, the, the triumphant entry, also known as Palm Sunday, was he cleansed the temple, if you recall. So he overthrew the temples and, you know, drove out the animals, and, or not the temples, he overthrew the, the tables of the money changers within the temple grounds, and uh, they, they weren't happy. So then it says, so this is the last bit of chapter 19. Every day he was teaching at the temple. But the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the leaders among the people were trying to kill him. Yet they could not find any way to do it because all the people hung on his words. Now this gives you a bit of the scenario. So he's very, very popular. People want to listen to him and hear him. They're crowding around. And so the people that want to kill him, Luke doesn't mince words here, they're having trouble because... You know, he's so popular. They, they don't want to themselves become unpopular by, by doing something. So they, they're trying to do it in tricky ways. Um, now, this is a little aside that you may or may not be interested in. This is, this is a, you know how in your magazine you have that sidebar of related topics? Okay, so this has nothing to do with the sermon. <laughs> but I just learned this recently. So I, I've been a long time interested in Bible translation. I may have told you this. At one point, I thought, maybe I'll be a Bible translator. That'd be cool. Wycliffe Bible Translators was very appealing to me. Uh, I never pursued it, but I did take linguistics at university for a, a couple of years, uh, which is kind of the study of the science of languages. But anyway, I was reading recently in Christianity Today, which is a magazine that I get, that it, it would appear that the Gospel of Luke, which we're reading today, Luke is pr probably, arguably, the most translated book of the entire Bible into more languages than any other. And that's a recent development because what's happened is that, uh, you know, the resources of the Bible translators have been stretched pretty thin. And so they look for ways to help support their, 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 this ministry and this great work. There, there, are, still, there are still dialects uh, around, quite a few, which have not, some of them have not even been written down yet. So they have to learn how to write them, like develop an orthography, as they call it, and then, you know, start translating the Bible. And they're much more, to a much greater extent nowadays, they use the people that, you know, actually know the language, the people that are uh, indigenous to wherever they're, they're translating. But the thing is, they needed support. So there's a thing called the Jesus film. Have you guys ever seen it or heard of it? Wow. 
<laughs> a few years ago, it was huge. And it is huge worldwide. It's hugely used to teach people about Jesus. It's a film based on the book of Luke. And it just basically is word for word-ish uh, based on the book of Luke. So they, these two have partnered together. This, the Bible translators have partnered together with uh, the Jesus film people. And, of course, the first thing they translate is the book of Luke. So <laughs> the book of Luke now is, is the first thing translated, then other, the, after that, other New Testament books and Old Testament books. I don't know if you care, but anyway, thought, thought, you know, I'll let you know. So Bible translation is ongoing. The Jesus film. Yeah. Film, yeah. So, and we have, we have a copy or two here, but, except I think it's on VHS, and I, which they've uninvented. <laughs> Rene Benoit is the only one that's got a VCR anymore. So, <laughs> movie night. Maybe we should we should do that. Okay. Anyway, moving on. So here's the question. Well, so the background. Once again, Luke is telling us exactly the situation. Spies are there. <laughs> Luke says, "Who pretended to be honest?" <laughs> Which I think is hilarious. Don't they always pretend to be honest? But anyway. They hoped to catch Jesus in something he said so that they might hand him over to the power and authority of the government. So this is clearly trying to catch him up. Um, this is not the first time uh, Gwen alluded to this at the very beginning of the chapter. They, they came up and they said, by what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you this authority? Jesus answers the question with a question. I'll ask you a question. John's baptism, from heaven or from men, from people? Was it human or, or, or divine? And they don't want to answer that because they'll be unpopular. So <laughs> he says, that I'm not telling you the answer to that either. And then the set, some of you were here last week. Remember we talked about the Sadducees. They're trying to catch him up on the whole, the riddle of the, um, uh, the, the woman, the widow, uh, who had seven husbands. And, what, you know, in the resurrection, you know, who will be her husband? Which one of the seven? And so you remember that from last week, right? Yeah, sure. Good golly. I know what it's like to be a teacher. Feel your pain. <laughs> Feel your pain. <laughs> um, so, so, so here they're trying to trick him. Uh, and so the spies question him. This is great. Teacher, we know that you speak and teach what is right, and that you do not show partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Weren't they so nice? You know, they buttered him right up, you know. <laughs> if it was any of the rest of us, we'd feel pretty, you know, puffed up and thinking, wow, yeah, these people like me. They, they you know, they, they got a handle on what I'm all about. And then they blast, is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? <laughs> so you know, they butter him up and then they stick the knife in. And it, it, so th this may not seem like a problem to you, but it's a huge problem in Jesus' context, in his world. So amongst the Jews, the Jews were under the, the thumb of the Romans at this point. And many of them did not like that. In fact, probably most, if not all, didn't like it. And some were, were, you know, were zealously trying to, to extract the nation from Roman rule. They were called, some of them were called zealots. They were revolutionaries. And there were all kinds of re revolutions happening. A lot of the crucifixions that, that you know, historically happened were of people who were leading insurrections. And not very long after this, so this is, this is 30, -ish, 30 AD ish, by 70 AD, another huge insurrection happens from the, the you know, Jewish leaders bring about this rebellion, and Rome comes and squashes it uh, brutally. I and mean, then many, many die, and they tear down the temple stone from stone, and the walls, and you know, they burn a lot of Jerusalem. So uh, that's the context here. You have people that really don't, well, they hate, they hate the Roman rule, and they really do not believe in paying taxes. So, so th this question, if Jesus says one thing, you know, he can raise the ire of so many people who hate the Romans. Yeah, you should pay your taxes. <laughs> On the other, if he says, don't pay your taxes, they have something to go and, and tell the authorities about that can get them arrested, right? So what's he going to do? So that's, that's, uh, that's the trick question. So the answer is, show me a coin. Who's, whose likeness and inscription is this? Caesar's. Okay, well, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and give to God what is God's. Do, 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 do. <laughs> and there, it says, they were unable to trap him in what he said. They were astonished, and they became silent. So what, what's that all about? Now, see... 
the one that he doesn't really answer the question, does he? He doesn't give them a nice simplistic answer, which is what they were hoping for. Don't we love simplistic answers? <laughs> we do. Uh, uh, but it, gee, and I think this is a wonderful kind of demonstration of Jesus calling us to be, be people that think for ourselves. Because we don't want to do that. We want to have a simply laid out, cut and dry. Uh, and, uh, you know, God has given us a whole lot of resources and capacities in order that we might actually consider things for ourselves. We do like simplistic answers. The appeal of many religions and even many versions of the Christian faith, I think, uh, it, you know, is simplistic answers. So I may be way in line here, but, you know, to me, to a large degree, uh, the, the religion of Islam is, <laughs> is very appealing to people because it just sets out, there's the, you know, here's the five pillars, do them. Or, uh, now, Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> I've, I've studied it over the years. And uh, uh, nothing, we've got wonderful people around here who are Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the belief system that they, they hold to. And, uh, you know, it is one of those things where here's, here's the directions. Just do it. Like, you know, you, you, part of your job is going to be you have to go door to door. Part of your job is, you know, you're not, you're not going to be uh, uh, no blood transfusions for you. You better not be celebrating Christmas. And, you know, any other questions you have, you've got to get the answer straight down from the Watchtower Society. <laughs> and... There's not a whole lot of encouragement to think things through for yourself. Here is the interpretation. And, and it's been, you know, Christ, the Christian churches over the years and the centuries have also displayed this kind of, you know, let's get some pat answers so everybody will know how they should behave and what they're supposed to do. You may remember the time, or you have heard of the time, when within the church or churches, basically it was, you know, it was a lot of don'ts. <laughs> Don't drink, don't smoke, don't play cards, don't gamble, don't go to movies, don't dance, etc., etc. And maybe you better get to church three times on Sunday and maybe once in the middle of the week. Um, remember those times? That, that, was, that was, you know, and you could get in trouble with your peers if you didn't actually abide by those. But the Roman Catholics have, have it down to of science a little bit, you know. <laughs> Thou must go to Mass. Or you have sinned if you have not gone, and you will have to come to confession. I, I, I noticed this a few years ago. I was on a, my sabbatical, and I was visiting different churches, so I thought I'd go to the Catholic Church in Minden, and I did. It was, it was a great experience, but it was full to the gunnels. It was just chock full of people. that I'm going Catholic, because they, they have to come to church. <laughs> so when everyone conforms to the group think, and what they're told to think, it starts to look like a cult. Right? And we, we tend to that because it's easy. Uh, over the years, my experience and the experience of many other Christian leaders, pastors and ministers and elders and priests and stuff, is people will ask us these questions because they want the simple answer. Right? Like, you know, sh sh am I allowed to have an alcoholic beverage? Can I drink? I'm supposed to tell them? <laughs> Nowadays, marijuana is, you know, cannabis is legal. Can I use cannabis? Um, a thing out there is, you know, made um, medical assistance in death and dying. You know, is that, can I go with that? <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if you could just get a nice, clear, straight answer, as opposed to actually thinking these through for themselves. So the beauty, the beauty of, of real, genuine Christian faith, but at the same time, the risk of it, the danger of it, if you will. So it's beauty, wonder, but also risky, is that there is freedom. We've been given amazing freedom. And we're to take individual responsibility for our choices. We're to think humbly, prayerfully, and deeply about issues we confront, okay, and, and, and make up our minds, but also graciously allow others to have different viewpoints. I've underlined that because I want to repeat that. Because that's a problem today in churches. We've got it right, and those guys are wrong, and uh, I'm not even going to talk to them. You know, that is not the attitude of Christ. We, we may come to quite different conclusions about some things, but we're called to love our brothers and our sisters, uh, graciously allowing others to have different viewpoints. We've seen that in the last few years in a big way. We have as resources to aid us in, in uh, you know, thinking and learning the scriptures, the indwelling Holy Spirit. Christ gives the Holy Spirit to all those who, who come to faith in him. Our consciences, 
We have consciences and we have intuition. Even men have intuition. Did you know that? <laughs> just because they never use it doesn't mean they don't have it. No. Sometimes you just call it, you know, going, going by my gut kind of thing, you know, just got a feeling. Um, and our God given minds. And in fact, not only the God given, the God inspired in many. And so if, we, if you belong to Christ, if you're in Christ, according to Paul in his, one of his letters, I forget which one, he says, we have the mind of Christ, he says. We have the mind of Christ. So we, we have the full equipment to sort things out on our own. So I, I just think that that's, that's implicit in this passage, that Jesus is calling people to think, because he does not give a clear answer. Render to Caesar what is Caesar's, to God what is God's. So what, what is Caesar's and what is God's? What is that? <laughs> well, some things are pretty clear, I think, uh, pretty obvious. One is the, the issue at point here, which is, you know, should we pay taxes? Yes. <laughs> I think it's pretty, I don't know that I have a choice, frankly, or I, I guess I can go to jail or something, but that's not much of a choice. And, you know, as, as the church uh, was, became more and more established, um, the teaching became more and more clear. So Paul, in his letter to the Romans, chapter 13, says this unequivocally. Uh, it's a whole chapter, on, well, a whole, I think, eight verse, seven or eight, seven verses on this subject. He says, everyone must submit themselves to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. So it's interesting. We may think, you know, government's evil sometimes, but according to Scripture, government is established and under, the, under God. So, so in a sense, the, the dichotomy that Jesus presents, either you know, render to Caesar what Caesar's, or to God what is, what, what is God's, is not quite, I mean, there's more to it. I mean, it, it, because even what is Caesar's is God's. It's all the things that, the, the power that Caesar has, the authority Caesar has, uh, the position Caesar is from God, and they are answerable, uh, answerable to God. Um, he goes on, I'm not going to read the whole, therefore it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also because of conscience. There it is again. This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. So at this point, Paul is spelling it out fairly clearly, <laughs> what it might mean to render to Caesar what is Caesar. And uh, Peter, St. Peter, and I think it's his first epistle, says something very, very similar. Um, now, besides that, there's things like, I don't know, jury duty, right? Government calls you to jury duty, what are you going to do? No, nah, I don't want to. No, you, you got to go show up. Um, and uh, that's part of rendering to Caesar. You may be able to wiggle out of it for whatever reason. I've wiggled out twice now in heaven. You know, but, you know, I, I do believe it's my duty to go, but uh, it's, it's not very convenient. <laughs> Participating in elections, you know. So that's not, that's not something you have to do. But, uh, you know, in, in our job, it, what, uh, what, I call, what I call Caesar here, I just mean all governments, right? Whether... Federal, provincial, municipal, all of that. That's Caesar in our, in our system. Um, participating in elections. I mean, you know, as Christians that, that seek to be responsible citizens of a country, uh, we, we have the freedom to not vote, but we also have the freedom to vote. You know, we, we have that privilege. So, you know, I, I, it's a responsible way to exercise our, our liberty. Respecting laws and law enforcement officers who have been disrespected quite a bit in some, some instances of late. Um, you know, that's rendering to Caesar. <clears throat> but then it gets a little bit, you know, harder to discern. Things like, what about drafted military service? We don't have it right now. I had four sons, so I was kind of glad that was the case. And one joined the military anyway. But, uh, you know, back in the Second World War, we had, we had drafted service, right, uh, for, for part of that. Um, and there are Christian sects or uh, sections of the Christian church, like the Mennonites, who are uh, out there as being pacifists, saying, you know, we, we, will not, we will not go forward for military duty. And we're willing to go to jail if that's the, the price we have to pay. 
And we know certainly back in the, the Vietnam days when they were, the draft was in the States, there were a whole lot of people who were trying to dodge the draft. They were, they were conscientious objectors, and some of them came to Canada to dodge the draft. <clears throat> big, big issue in uh, not that long ago. So, you know, okay. And what about Caesar's questionable decisions and actions? When they do stuff that we're, eh, kind of makes us wonder, do we have to support that? Like recently, there was you know things like mask mandates. You may have heard of that, <laughs> and some people weren't very happy about that. And you know the Emergency Measures Act, which was you know enacted just this year, um, you know, and, and people have taken taken issue with that sort of thing. And and uh, what about protesting against that stuff or civil disobedience even? Sit downs and, and blocking blocking pipeline building or blocking. Uh, uh, the, the foresting of these ancient, huge redwoods in BC and stuff like that. All that stuff has gone on. Where do, we, where do you stand on that? It's not as crystal clear as you might think. Um, and, and civil disobedience actually happens in Scripture. Uh, for instance, well, go back to the book of Daniel. We'll see what happened there. But even in the New Testament, in, in the early, early church, when the disciples began to proclaim the gospel... They got called up before the authorities. And the authorities said, okay, you got to, in some cases they whipped them or beat them. And then they said, okay, you can no longer go about talking about Jesus. They, went, they got back together. They had a big prayer time. They said, okay, now what's right? To do what God tells us or to do what people tell us to do? And they went back out and started talking about Jesus. Full of the Holy Spirit, it says. So that was civil disobedience. And it still happens today because all across this fair world that we live in, there has been a lot of persecution of people who, who will proclaim the gospel, and uh, they do it anyway, because they, they, they sense that it's God's calling. What if, what if, uh, what if Hitler's the Fuhrer? What if, what if Adolf Hitler is the, the leader of your country? Right? <laughs> then, then what do you do? I mean, it says here, what did I just read? Uh, the rulers are ordained by God. I don't know if you ever heard of a guy named Dietrich Bonhoeffer. So he was a, a Lutheran minister in Germany during the Second World War. And a lot of the, a lot of the uh, clergy and churches just went along with whatever Hitler was say, saying. But, not, but a, a minority, a few were, were, were criticizing, and they were putting themselves at risk to do this, big risk. And uh, Bonhoeffer, who, who was a, a widely known uh, Christian teacher, writer, uh, a lot of his, his stuff's around today, people study it. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, <laughs> he got himself involved in a plot to assassinate Hitler. Can you imagine the, 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 the wrestlings of conscience he must have gone through to get himself involved with that? But he thought, just thought, knowing what he knew, that that was the right way to go. He, he, of course, it didn't happen. It was not successful. He was arrested and he eventually died uh, in custody. That, that was the price he was ready to pay. So that, there's, there's some thinking for you to think about <laughs> You know, in rendering to Caesar what is Caesar's. What is God's? What is God's? You know, Jesus took the coin. He said, show me a coin. And he said, you know, whose likeness and inscription is this? What if he grabbed one of his disciples and said to the crowd, whose likeness and image is this? Did you notice how those two are very, seem to be almost, to me they seem related. Likeness and inscription, likeness and image. And they would have had to say, being good Jews who knew the scriptures, he's in the, this person is in the likeness of God. And then he could have said, okay, well, then render to God what is God's, and to Caesar what is Caesar's. If we render to Caesar taxes, then what we render to God is our whole selves. Paul says in, uh, I think it's Romans 12, it says, present your bodies, therefore, unto God as living sacrifices, which is your reasonable worship. Present your bodies to God as living sacrifices, which is your reasonable worship. You and I, we belong to God. We don't belong to ourselves. We, and it's not just our bodies. Uh, it's, it's our possessions. It's our time. It's our abilities. Everything. It's all God's. Everything is God's. And, you know, we struggle with that. We all have a lot of trouble with this. <laughs> you know, admitting that we are not our own, we belong to someone, we belong to God. 
We all have a lot of trouble with this, and we struggle with this until we come to the cross of Jesus Christ. When we come to the cross, we get to see God for who he really is and what he's really like. We get to see someone who not only cares about us and loves us, but he, he cares about us and loves us enough that he enters into our lives. He becomes one of us. He suffers with us. You know, he walks with us. He, uh, he sleeps and, and eats and drinks with us. And then he, uh, he lays down his life for us sacrificially that we might be completely forgiven and, and that we might be reconciled and brought back to God. This is our Jesus. This is our God. So when we come to that, that point, that allows us to make the jump. Yeah, I, I, I can belong to such a one. Paul, Paul says it in uh, 2 Corinthians, I think it's uh, 4 or 5, I think it is. He says, um, one died for all, which means that all therefore have died. And he died for all, that they should live no longer for themselves, but for him who for their sake died. It's just, it's just spiritual logic. But it comes from actually coming face to face with the cross of Jesus Christ. And it's the, the, the natural conclusion. So then we agree that what is truly owed to God is love. We don't owe that to Caesar. We don't owe that to the government. We really don't owe the government our love. We may owe obedience. We may owe respect. We may owe taxes. Okay. But not love. The God who made us, who cares for us, who dies for us, who gifts us, who forgives us, who longs for us, who waits for us with unconditional love. He deserves our love. That's what we render to God. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, we thank you that you came to demonstrate the love of God and the wisdom of God. We thank you for this teaching today, Lord, that you would call us to use all our faculties in life to be fully who we are, to be whole, to think. Lord, help us to think. Inform our thoughts and our decisions by your spirit, by your word, that we may make sense of your will, of our world, of your word. Lord, lead us in your path. We thank you for this great liberty that we have. Help us to use it well. Lord, as we seek to bring the truth of the gospel, the truth of your love to our world. And we ask it in your name, Jesus, our Lord, you who taught us in prayer to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's sing the church's one foundation, it's Jesus Christ, her Lord.
Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of us, both now and always. Amen. Thank you.